This is the 2015 Chevrolet Traverse. And today we're gonna take a look at the inside and do a short little review of it. To get started, I will go ahead and show you the key or the remote keyless entry rather. It does have remote start, lock the car, hold the button down. It does feature signal lights on the mirror, which I do like very much. As you can see from the remote start, the air is on. Go ahead and place the key in the ignition here. Everything you might expect from a new car. As you can see, the odometer's on 200 miles. It is a brand new car. And to have a look here at the uh, touch screen display, this particular model does not feature a navigation system, so you just got your regular radio. That's not what I wanted. I am still learning it. Here's your different options, AM, FM, phone, and XM. It does have Bluetooth options over here. There's your settings. It does have a few other things like Pandora and whatnot built in it. I'm not exactly sure how that works. I think you have to activate the, uh, the built-in Wi-Fi in the vehicle to get those to work because I wasn't able to get it to pair to my phone through Bluetooth in order to do that. I do have Bluetooth paired, but it's not. it won't use my phone's internet for that. So I don't understand exactly how it works. Maybe if I read the manual, I, I would know, but I don't have that available to me. The vehicle does feature OnStar here on the mirror, and then you do have garage door openers up here at the top. It does have this wood grain. I don't know if it's real or plastic. I'm going to say it's probably plastic. It still looks really nice, and I like it. Now, from the 2014 uh, Captiva to now the 2015 Traverse, we have a good idea of a comparison between the two. I did review the Captiva. I gave it probably one of the worst reviews I've given a vehicle this year. And uh, I'm sure you guys are still fresh on that one because it just posted last week. So, <laughs> um, this car, I think they've taken the right step as far as getting all this back to where it should be. I don't even know how to get back to normal here. <laughs> Uh, the touch screen display using their own build system that they've made and and just you know going in that direction is really nice I think uh, I think they did a really good job with the stereo system as far as satellite reception goes this one does get better reception than the Captiva I would say this one compares to the Ram uh, 2014 Ram that I reviewed uh, it does still cut out in areas, but in, for the most part, it's a lot better reception than uh, what you might be used to. The uh, air conditioning is a dual zone where you set the temperature to what you want it. And the passenger can also set their temperature if they want different. You do have a sync button to sync it back all into whatever it needs to be. Pretty much every control imaginable uh, for the air nice to have controls down here are for heated seats you can do either just the back of the seat or the back and the bottom of the seat uh, you do have your rear wiper control traction control off this opens your rear hatch and then there's heated seats for the other side as well it does have built-in USB I've been using that to charge my phone as well as a power adapter it has this cover that folds closed and when you open it there's more storage and coin holders as you can see underneath that is another power adapter and a huge storage area 
this moves forward as you can see to cover that if you'd like it also has storage not a whole lot but it has storage you have a storage hole up here lots and lots of storage and I do like that if your glove box that's normal same as usual uh, let me turn this radio off so I don't get copyright here uh, that's what it, I guess that's what it shows when it's off I don't know <laughs> uh, I, I still don't I still haven't figured out how to set up the I mean you know, I, I know these newer vehicles do have Wi-Fi where you can activate the Wi-Fi I don't know if I can put that on my Verizon account and if I'm going to keep the car longer than a week, maybe I'll consider looking into that. But at this point, um, I'm, not, I'm not planning on keeping it. All these buttons here are soft touch, which is a little weird, like turning on your emergency lights or your flashers. There's no actual button. It's just a touch. And I'm not real, I don't know how I feel about that. That's not great. These buttons here control everything up here, which... Uh, I didn't understand that the first week I drove it, so <laughs> everything was really hard to understand. <laughs> uh, let's see what we got here. Trip A, trip B, uh, the fuel range, what I have left, average fuel economy, it says I'm on the max, fuel use, 10.6 gallons, oh, there was average speed, I kind of sped through that one. But, uh, and there's a lot of other different features that you can change in there, such as, uh, you know, how your remote start works and all of that. You do have steering wheel controls. Pretty much everything you need. Uh, you can use these two to uh, go to your next favorite, which I don't have the radio on. Um, voice button. I really don't even know what these two do. I haven't used them. And then volume up and down. Over here is your cruise control settings. Uh, same as any other vehicle and then you have some more buttons over here the only thing that i dislike about this vehicle which was the same deal with the captiva is you have to push this button to turn your fog lights on every time you want your fog lights on because they don't come on automatically with the vehicle so let's go ahead flip on the lights fog lights and flashers drop the window and have a look at the outside. It is a very big car, as you might can tell. And it does feature three rows of seats. Like I said, I do love this signal light on each mirror. Big tires, but it really doesn't feel that bad on the road. It doesn't feel like a big truck, even though it has big truck tires, in my opinion. The back hatch is power. However, I'm not real sure if that works without the button. So we're going to test that for the first time right now. Is there even a button to push? Okay, there's not. Maybe there's something down here. Hold on. Yep, there's one. Okay, it is power. Even when you pull the lever, as you can see, it does have three rows of seats. And there's looking in. Has this uh, storage hole here. I've got my jumper cables. I like to keep those with me. I don't think it has uh, a spare tire. Now, that, I could be wrong, but I don't think it does. It's like some sort of storage hole here, but I don't know how to get this off. I don't really want to break it. I mean, I don't know. It's a new car. I don't want to, I don't want to do anything to mess it up. So as you've seen, opening the rear hatch was uh, pretty easy. You just, it's a button right in there. <laughs> and up here is a button right there that you can push to close it. And there it goes down. The back seat is more of a van-like back seat with, I'd say, ample room. Probably not somewhere I'd want to ride very long because it is small, but it's pretty decent. 
The seats are not bench, they're bucket seats. The third row is, however, a bench seat. Do have lights at the top, air conditioner vents. It has a air and radio control here, which I have not played with. I don't really know anything about it. I just know that it works. So I guess you can plug headphones in and listen to FM, AM, XM. But it's not, uh, yeah. I guess each button controls the, the jacks rather than the car's audio. You can uh, turn off the rear audio somehow. I think you just hit the power button actually. And uh, if the stereo is on up there, it will turn the audio off in the back seat. And then your air set like that. I haven't played with this. I've, I've not rode in the back seat, so that's max cold <laughs> and floor top both. And now you can actually hear the air running back here and back there. Overall, I would say this is a very nice car. There's some glasses. I don't know where they came from or whose they are. Looks like 3D glasses. <laughs> I swear, this, this car is new. <laughs> uh, the mileage on it is, uh, when I got it, was 85. And um, that probably, that's probably my sister's, because my sister's been back there. The mileage on it was 85 when I got it. And uh, the paperwork shows that it was bought in Lexington or something like that not far from here uh, actually it's 65 miles from here so the vehicle has 20 extra miles minus what it was driven from there to here it does have a lot of cup holders every door has a cup holder you've got the two up here which I like so how do I rate the car <laughs> that's uh, that's really where we're going with that uh, I like it. It's a really nice car. And, uh, you know, if I were in the market for such a, an SUV that, that's sort of van-like but better, this this is way better than the dreaded van. Uh, you see a van and you're like, oh, it's a van, you know, and you don't want to drive it. The Chrysler Town & Country was the only van that I actually liked. So, this car is nice. I like it. Um, it's It's definitely me. So we're going to go over here. I'm going to pull over and park in my other parking spot that was not available the other day. As you can see, it does have the rear view camera. It does have the backup sensors. Overall, this is a really nice car and I enjoy it. Uh, it does have its little things that bug me like the fog lights turning themselves off every time you turn the car off. But uh, compared to the Chevrolet Captiva, this car, they've done a lot of things right and a lot of things differently. And I do like this car. Um, I don't know, I mean, I. <laughs> It's nice, and that's really all I've got about it. I like it. I don't know what any of these buttons do. <laughs> I guess that's inside air, air conditioning. Oh, okay, defrost, duh. I should've knew that. Sink, that turns the back air off when I sink it. You can adjust the rear. And turn it completely off, I guess. I don't know what I'm doing. I thought I was on the rear. I'm controlling the front for some reason. Let's say rear. Maybe that just controls the rear fan. Yeah, okay. I don't know what I'm doing. Anyway. <laughs> okay, yeah, rear. I don't know. Maybe I just did it. Maybe it timed out. I don't know. 
So, uh, this this Chevy Link thing, um, this is new. I don't know. It's it's new to me because I've never messed with it before. Um, I, I really didn't get a chance to learn it or learn anything about it. Uh, it's not exactly the easiest thing to learn. I just push random buttons and see what I do. See, there's XM Preview. We don't want that. Uh, menu. There's your like your XM stuff. You can go back over here to home and go into settings. And that had a few things, but really not a whole lot. Text message setup. Uh, voice recognition. Bluetooth devices. So yeah, I don't know, information profile, I don't even know what this is. <laughs> do I want to do this? I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't really get a chance to learn this system or know anything about it yet, uh, but it's a big improvement from the basic radio system that they had in the Captiva last year. And that alone makes me like it. I like that they've integrated a touch screen. I like that they've actually taken a step to go further with this. So I do like this system. Ringtone? That's pretty cool. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll play with this. I'll try to learn it some more and I'll come up with a more in-depth video on that particular system. But as for now, as far as the car goes, not really considering the stereo system, everything else, I like it. This is a really nice car. This is not the base model. This is the LT, LT2 to be exact. Um, it's not even the LTZ and it's way better than the Captiva was. So, um, I, I give this car a really high rating. I like it. Um, this would be a, a definite considerable buy if I were in the market for such a big vehicle. Um, this would be one I would consider. And, uh, you know, the Chrysler Town & Country is nice, but it's still a minivan. And this right here takes that minivan out of it. It's not a minivan. You still have the three rows of seats. It doesn't have the body roll like a minivan has. It has plenty of power. My goodness. It's only a V6, but this thing will take off. I just couldn't believe at the amount of power I was getting from such a big vehicle. So I do like this car, and uh, I give it a really good rating. I don't know. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to say a 9. For this particular type of vehicle, it's a nice one, and I like it. I don't know what I'm doing with the radio again. <laughs> Still don't know the radio, but um, I've only had it a couple of days. I haven't even had it the week yet, and I do like it. This is definitely something that interests me. So I do give the vehicle a 9 out of 10 uh, in its particular class. I would say this is more of a large SUV, uh, and... <laughs> And really, it's not. It's not a big V8. It's not a big uh, gas guzzler SUV that you might expect from something of this size. This car is nice and big and roomy. And, I mean, even though it's only cloth seats, I don't know if I mentioned that, they're pretty nice cloth seats. They're comfortable. They're not hard like the Captiva. These are good seats. They're, it's all, overall, a really nice vehicle. And I think Chevy did a good job with it. I'm not a big Chevy fan, but this particular one, I like. I like it a lot. They did a good job. So that's my review of this vehicle. I'll try to learn this system, and if there's anything more to be said about it, I'll make another video about it. If you guys have any questions, I will have this car for another week, and uh, I'll try to answer them or, or make a review or a video about the particular thing that you want to know about. So uh, feel free to post in the comments. I'll have it for another week. And uh, maybe, maybe I'll have it longer. I mean, I really like this car. And uh, we've been talking about taking a trip in it because it just rides so comfortably well. It's just, you don't feel like it's a big car. You know, you don't, you don't hit a bump and feel the whole car dip. It doesn't do that. It's just, it doesn't feel like a big car. It drives like a small SUV, but it's not. It's a big SUV. And that's the great thing about it. All right, guys. Well, I'll see you later.
In the video I shot earlier, I noticed you really couldn't see the signal lights that well. So I wanted to get a night shot. Headlights, fog lights on the bottom, your turn signals, and then the mirror signals, which are really quite bright at night. And the back lights, as you can see, are just bouncing off of the building. Very, very bright. There's no chance you're not gonna see this car. Unfortunately, there's no back facing signal on the sides. It is for the front only, but I still like it a lot.